Well, John McDonald, you've worked mostly recently in darts and a lot of people in greyhound racing often sort of wish and hope that greyhound racing could pick up their presentation to the level that darts has. I think it's fair to say darts was a, a bit of a dying sport and has been completely rejuvenated, mostly thanks to the likes of Barry Hearn. What do you think greyhound racing can do differently? And do you think there are comparisons that could be made between greyhound racing and darts and, and how we could up our game, if you like? Yeah, you, you know, you're not the first sport to ask that question. Um, the interesting thing about the darts is what makes it so successful is it's just like a good fruitcake. Everything has to be there. All the ingredients have to be there. You just can't have one of something and it will work. So I've noticed looking at it, and it's a question that's asked around the world, everywhere we go, is like, why? What is it about darts? And I always say, you need to go and find out. You know, it's all very well watching it on TV, but you need to go there and see it and experience it. And it is, when you're close to a sport, sometimes you take a lot for granted. But in the last year, I really analysed um, quite what makes it so special. And it's working like we have behind closed doors recently. I found it really difficult to get up and get into it. Whereas when there's a crowd, it's easy to do. So what's the secret? Well, in Barry Hearn's case, Barry has the astute ability to employ the right people. He gets the right people in the right place. He knows he will never do anything that doesn't excite him. So if he sees something, doesn't like it, not interested. See something, sees a glimmer in there, he'll throw the right people in that direction and it will go well. So firstly, how do you improve um, the night out, the experience? And that's what it is, isn't it? It's the night out. Um, I always used to get sort of puzzled when I was working at the boxing and people would spend so much time in the bar and the boxing's on. And then I realized there's boxer fans and not boxing fans. So at the Greyhounds, you might get a group of guys and girls come along to watch a race because their friend owns the dog or is in the syndicate. So they've gone along for a night out. How do you get them to stay and enjoy it, but enjoy every race? So really and truthfully, there needs to be a re a refit. Everything needs to be um, looked at. But at the end of it all, you also have to think of the dog's care. So there's all very well having fireworks, the red arrows, uh, you know, um, singing, dancing girls, loud music. But you're dealing with an incredible creature that deserves all the respect it gets. So maybe less is more the most for those that have never been to greyhound racing those that minute of that race from start when they're in the traps so it goes over the line it's like the most explosive time in sport it, there's so much in it there's so much drama but you've got to carry that on because the minute that race has gone everything goes flat and that would be the time to capitalise. I don't know how. Uh, I wish I could. I wish I did have a magic wand for everybody, but I don't. But there's a few pointers there. You know, it goes quiet. Bang, the race. It goes quiet again. Sometimes that's not such a bad thing, people to recoup themselves, get ready for the next race. But I think that's an area that we should all look at. That's actually a way I've never heard of it, thought before, it, uh, spoken of before. It reminds me of uh, NBA, where they go off the court and as soon as the players have gone off, you know, there's um, girls dancing, cheerleaders and stuff and kiss camera and there's still things that could be done without fireworks and explosions. Exactly. Do you think it is a dying sport or do you think there is a place for greyhound racing in today's day and age? It's, it's an interesting one. Um, the whole world of entertainment has changed um, in certainly in my lifetime, it's unrecognisable from what it was like years ago. You've only got to see old film of football, old film of boxing, and you compare it to the modern day stuff, it's changed. Whereas greyhound racing looks exactly the same. So 
will it become a sport that will die and fade? I sincerely hope not, but it's heading that way if we're not careful because we need to modernise it. We need to do all we can to modernise it, to have fun with it and for people to enjoy it. And if it has fallen flat and something can become vogue, so what can happen is people will go, well, we used to go, but we don't go anymore. And that becomes infectious. And people go, oh, well, I'm not going to go then. And, oh, well, if you're not going to go, I'm not. And before you know where you are, just the word of mouth has killed the business. So we have to get that back. We have to get the excitement back. And we have to get people in. And, you know, if you've noticed with horse racing now, what they're doing is they're having a show afterwards. And they're having bands on and they're doing this and they're doing that. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, straight after the race, we should set up a band and, and everyone have a great time. But, you know, something along them lines, people want more. They want more for their buck. You know, no, you, did, you did work on one Greyhound Derby. William Hill managed to get you involved and, and that was fantastic. I just want to finish on a, a slightly lighter note. I've loved the points you've made and I know a lot of people watching this will as well. But who is your favourite dog of all time? Just give me a, an example. Yeah, well, I'm afraid I'm going to go down that 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 well-worn path because I think Westmead Hawk was just, you know, the most incredible animal I've ever seen in my life. I know when I first went to Phil Reese's kennels and I saw their Derby winner, a bronze statue of it, and I and I just loved the elegance of it. But when I saw Westmead Hawk, you know, when it when they made the wax work, you know, and that they, they had that, I was like, oh, this is just this is the greatest animal that's ever existed. I mean. Just everything about it, the fairy tale story, everything that went with it, you know. And um, it's like Muhammad Ali in boxing, you know, everybody knows Westmead Hawk. I mean, that's, you know. So, yeah, for me, it's that. And I think it helped Greyhound Racing having incredible stories like that. You know, I just think everybody needs a sort of level of excellence to look up to. And, yes, it's nice when they get beat and the new one comes along, but you'll always remember the greats, you know, and I think that in Greyhound racing, that's the sort of mecca. That's the pinnacle of, of Greyhound racing. That was a, an incredible dog. I would agree with you with the Westmead Hawk uh, theory, definitely. So let's go back in time. Let's imagine Westmead Hawk is coming out for another race. It doesn't have to be a derby because we're, we're talking about improving the overall presentation of Greyhound racing. So he's in track four, he's on parade. You're announcing him, he's walking down, Let's bring him to Toaster. We'll mix the, the, the old with the new. So he's, he's coming down the, the horse race course as it is at Toaster. Yes. We've got about, I don't know, you've got maybe 15, 20 seconds. Introduce Westmead Hawk for us. You'd have to say, you'd have to start by saying, and now, ladies and gentlemen, there comes a time in your life when you meet a legend. That time has arrived. Racing out of trap four, would you please welcome the greatest greyhound that's ever lived. It's Westmead, Hawk. And the crowd go mad. <laughs> it's a legend. They put me on the uh, I know I did, I sorry. I should, have, I, should have, I should have said white titles. <laughs> None of that matters, you sold it to me anyway. John, you're fantastic uh, entertainment. It is time uh, to be a legend. Oh. Thank what you adult. so much for doing this interview. Good I'm luck. sure the viewers will enjoy it very much. And uh, yeah, you know, hopefully one day we'll see you at a Greyhound track again in the not oh, too no. distant future. Who knows? Take Thank care. you very much, John. Take care.